After emptying a few more jerry cans, we proceeded down the canning, in the opposite direction. We were backtracking a little to the honeycomb bluff, which we'd passed on the way into the clay pan. There's some rock art to be seen here, both outside the cave and inside its numerous tight passages. But there's also the occasional mud wasp nest, so be careful. Continuing on in a northwards direction, we passed back across the clay pan and headed further on. This was quite an impressive setup, with what appeared to be a sizeable fridge and much storage space. One wonders why it was abandoned here, but such an impressive setup, of course, comes with an impressive weight to match and that might have something to do with it. Shire of Halls Creek, we must be getting close. Over more June, and we reach Jinty Jinty, well 45. This well, previously known for excellent water, now stands in ruins. Another burnt out vehicle, this time a Jeep. Ah, they bought a Jeep. I'd imagine the owner found themselves the butt of a few more jokes than were just written on the side of this vehicle. And in this position too, one wonders if they were north or south bound, barely making it into the canning, or almost making it out. In the northern section of the track, the foliage was certainly what you call overgrown in places. This track, made by Peter Vernon, is a lot more direct than the original one. We reached Kujawari, well 46, which was restored as recently as 1991. It resembled a junkyard due to most of a broken Nissan patrol being strewn around the place, as well as copious quantities of empty cans and bottles. The well restoration at one point delivered useful water, historically described as excellent, but at a more recent time the entire area, including the well, burnt out. It's now a shallow sludge pit. The Kodara native soak exists around here, but has become overgrown. Ah, it's just bent. Yeah. It doesn't feel loose. Continuing over an area that definitely showed signs of being burnt in comparatively recent times, we headed towards Well 47. Reaching Katalapuru, well 47, curiously this one had two buckets and a length of stock trough, but no hole. Interesting combination. Thin striped spiky cactus. <laughs> we pressed on towards the next destinations, the track taking a massive dog leg around a very hilly area, going well outside the historical CSR corridor. Crossing over the Bredon Valley, we headed for the rock formation Crown Head. It was a right at Crown Head, past the Bredon Hills, down a track that didn't go where it was supposed to have. Reaching the end of it, I set off to find the route to Godfrey Tank on foot. Now why do you have to have thorns? It's not cool. That looked less vertical from over there. Okay. Direction check, we go left a bit.
looks like I can just go around that up here. See a can. Faint, but it's there. Just gotta follow this for 350. The wall here above the chasm contains a large number of historical names, as well as a few more I can't quite figure out. Continuing on, I followed the track to Bredon Pool, finding myself on the wrong side of it. I'd have to cross it, but two years of heavy rainfall left it very overgrown. That is a bloody big spider. Well, at least I avoided the spider. Eventually I found my way back to the vehicle track, which was only 400 metres away, but took close to half an hour to cover, making my way through the incredibly dense foliage. I called over the radio with GPS coordinates for a pickup, and we moved on. Yeah, that is the track, but it's impassable. Reaching Kanangara, well 48, it had about six buckets, the top of a drum, even more scrap metal, and yet no hole. The regeneration rate of this well was slow, so an underground tunnel was built at the bottom to improve it. This well was expected to see a lot of use, as it was the junction point between the Canning stock route and another stock route known as the Christmas Creek stock route. The Christmas Creek stock route, however, is not known to have ever actually been used. This is known as Twin Heads due to its twin... heads. Heads though? They look more like... Continuing on, here we have Chinaman's Hat. I've decided to leave the mirrors off. Another burnt out vehicle due to a Spinifex fire. Noticing a bit of a pattern here. And by this point it was starting to get dark. But we were trying to reach well 49. Although, not without trying to locate the lumbar native well first. Yep. That'll be it. That's possibly it, but let's carry on. Arriving at Lampa, well 49, the sign advised us to have our permits ready for inspection, although there wasn't a ranger stationed there. A 
At some point I got sick of the bugs smashing into my face while I was using a headlamp to cook dinner. So Operation Decoy was instituted, and actually worked rather well. A few thousand lumens of AliExpress special cob LED, and we had something else the bugs were drawn to instead. This well had a working well, the first we'd come across in quite a while. The northern half is certainly more constrained for water. This well had in the past been known as the Crystal Well, due to the water quality. It's not really going to be a taste test for me. Yeah, I mean, colour... Not quite as crazy yellow. No discernible taste. But the pre-start inspection revealed something that could become a problem. Alright, looks like we've got to stick up the CV boot. So... Might use the amalgam tape instead because this stuff just isn't sticking. We've got a second jack under the swing arm. That looks better. I've covered the boot with amalgam tape to stop sand getting in the hole and try to stop grease getting out. It'll need a new boot once we get back to civilization, but should easily last until we get there. If worse comes to worse and it does fail, we do have an entire spare CV but I'd rather not fit it until we have to. The old Australian Geographic sign still stands, but it's clearly seen better days. No, no, it's perfectly readable. None of this, none of that, and none of any of those. Another burnt out vehicle, and a rare example of an old Engel fridge that isn't still running. Continuing further on, I wrote a list of all the things we should replace once we get home. Well, I tried to anyway. Arriving at Drakan, well 50. Three barrels, a fence, and some remnants of where the hole was. Again, way too many buckets. What is it with all the buckets at this end? But a track continued out the back of the well. But there was something else to be seen a bit further down, the Gorvida Soak. This spectacular site somehow has rock in every colour imaginable in such a small area. So, 700 metres down the left side of the creek gorge. It was about 40 degrees at the time, and a long walk through soft sand wasn't appealing, but I wanted to find it. This would be much easier if it wasn't through soft sand. Ah, there's a right side and a left side. Okay. So according to the directions, carefully explore the left side. Well, if that's meant to be the covered pool, yeah, they're very covered and that's not much of a pool. Whatever it is, either I can't see it, it's not here, or I don't know. Um, I'm heading back. And then I realized something fundamental. It's not going to be found in the most hidden location imaginable. It's found somewhere you'd stand to take a break from being in the sun. Drovers carving their names in the wall as they cooled off in the shade, and plenty of Aborigines before then. I headed back to the car, and we continued down the track. Reaching a gate, we followed the signs towards Well 51. There was just one small issue here. We were heading straight for it, only suddenly there was a fence across the track. Turning right and following the tyre tracks, we thought we'd come across an opening in the fence, a gate or some sort of left turn towards the well. 
Only then we went past it. This was not the way. We're on the wrong side of the fence. Getting back to the gate this time, we turned right through the other gate, heading towards well 51 again. We came back to the other side of the fence, and this time we appeared to be heading the right way. Another broken vehicle, this time with some paint still on it, making it comparatively recent. Continuing on, a left turn, a dune, and we approached the broken windmill of Wirajara, well 51. It was an ignominious end for the stock route, the men having run out of meat, having almost no food left, and being short on water, then found out the well's production wasn't drinkable. Trotman suggested they go off to a bore to fetch more water, but the men refused to go anywhere until they had more food. Trotman began constructing the well by himself, later joined by Langheim, the camel handler, who was injured at the time. The well sinking team were eventually shamed into returning to work and finishing the well. Then they headed for Billa Luna, tired and hungry. Finding only a note from Canning saying the supplies were delayed, they headed for Halls Creek, finding Canning on the way just down the road. When he heard what had happened, he was furious and threatened to sack the men on the spot, eventually understanding how hard they were pushed, but refusing to understand why they didn't just finish the job. That's a wrap. So the first time we, we lost the top bit and, the, and one of the zippers, and that's when I taped it all up. And even after having it all taped up, the, uh, the trees have still managed to take the second zipper. So now if I unzip it, I can't, well, if I pull the zip open, I'm not gonna be able to put it back together. Bordering the top section of the CSR stands the Peruku Indigenous Protected Area with a few campsites that upon purchase of a permit, you can add to your canning trip. Backtracking to the infamous gate, we headed down the other track towards Yonbu. The original track to it had been closed, but past another broken car, and after taking a detour through some sort of farming area, we reached it. This one stands next to a mostly dry lake that in the wet season is known for its bird life. Heading on, around the area, passing a rusted out truck, we continued on to the second camping area, Handover Camp. We dismantled the Spinifex protection and removed the sand flags. They had served us well, but they were no longer necessary. Sand flag is down. No more sand flag tenor, no more shake cloth. This campsite even had phone signal, only just. The name of Handover Camp comes from the fact that when this area was handed back to the traditional owners in 2001, the ceremony occurred right here. Heading down to the edge of the lake to watch the sunset, I attempted a time lapse. Sadly, the layer of red dirt on the back window was no place to put a suction cup.
The next morning we packed up camp and continued further north. Crossing through Milan, we continued further on. No shortage of broken cars out here. Eventually we reached the canning again, backtracking a little towards Bloodwood Bore, passing the HEMA maps information sign. Although the windmill here is fully functional, raising and lowering the rod, it appears that the bore pump has been replaced with an electric one. Guessing it gets plugged into a generator, because I don't see a power point around here. Be aware that there are just random coils of barbed wire left around this one. A bit further up the CSR, we re-entered the Peruku IPA, reaching Stretch Lagoon, the third campsite. We could have camped here for the night, as we had bought two nights on the permit, but it just felt like too soon to stop. And if anyone wonders where that sign went, it's here, leaning on the side of the toilet block. We continued on reaching Billa Luna, if you're desperate for fuel, you can fill up here, although it's only been 839 kilometers since Kanawarichi, about 80 kilometers more than that if you go via the Peruku IPA, compared to 1061 of the south section. Perhaps at $3.10 a litre you decided not to fill everything up again, and you need a little more for the next 173 kilometers to Halls Creek. Billa Luna is also the end of the Canning Stock Route four-wheel drive track, and from this point on, we continue up the Tanami track, Tanami Road, or Tanami Highway, depending on what condition it's in, and who you ask. There was one last thing to see though. We took the turn off to Wolf Creek Crater, and headed down the very corrugated track. Unlike the movie, camping is in fact allowed here, and there's quite a sizeable campground. It's about a 100 meter walk up to the top of the crater's rim, but you can then embark upon a 3.4 kilometer walk all the way around it. It's the second largest crater of the 12 of its kind known in the world. There's nothing on the left, and then crater. And there it was, the end of the Tanami. Hall's Creek is just down the road. That's the first sealed road we've been on in how long? Uh, 2,089 kilometers. 
2089 kilometers and it's only about 15 days. What have they done to the road here? <laughs> yeah, it's like covered in this black rocky stuff that's all flat. And a room with four walls, a roof and a door for the first time in just over two weeks. Similar to how there's a few different points you could consider the start of the Canning Stock Route, there's also some debate as to where it could be considered to actually end. Uh, well 51, although it's the last well on the Canning Stock Route, um, well 50 was the last one that Canning was actually involved in the construction of. Billaluna, on the other hand, is where the actual four-wheel drive track ends and the track merges onto a turn-off from the Tanami Road. Um, and of course, Halls Creek, as the Canning Stock Route historically was from Waluna to Halls Creek. But it's not this Halls Creek. That's better. So this, about 15k down the road, is the location of Old Halls Creek, or as it was at the time the canning was an actual stock route, Halls Creek. Um, in 1955, a lack of space to expand the town outwards and concerns over a poor water supply basically forced the town to move to the current spot where it is now. And this, for the actual stock drovers, is where the canning would have ended. Thing was, it's only the 18th. We had some slack in the itinerary, but we'd smashed through it, completing the trip much quicker than expected. We had almost two more weeks to make our way back across Australia before we were expected back at work. So this is far from the end of our adventure. Join us next time to see where we go next. Until then, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and see you next time.